The Baja style upper replacement grille that we have here would be an awesome choice for the 2009 to 2014 F-150 owners who might be going for more of that Raptor styling, but would prefer to keep the factory blue oval emblem proudly display right there in the center. Now the grill will pack a durable automotive grade ABS plastic construction, along with the dark charcoal finish and LED accent lighting all for right around 250 bucks. The site's gonna call this one a strong one out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter. Take you about an hour or so to complete as well, but if you hang with me for a little bit, we'll walk you through the job later in the video. So swapping out that factory grill on your F-150 is a relatively easy and inexpensive way to totally change up the look and vibe of your truck. And on that same topic, one of the nice things about the grill category is just the sheer amount of options out there, ranging from mild to wild and everything in between. So this particular option to me is gonna be one part Raptor grill and one part 2018 F-150 grill, thanks to that bold bar kind of running across the middle of the grill, which I think is gonna give off more of a modern vibe, while again, still retaining that iconic blue oval. And by the way, that's something a lot of the aftermarket grills simply do not offer. Now, as far as Raptor inspiration here, well, I think that's pretty obvious, right? You've got that same kind of charcoal honeycomb design, along with the telltale amber running lights across the top portion of the grill. Materials are gonna be very similar to that of your factory grill as well as you're looking at the durable yet very lightweight ABS plastic, which has been designed by the way using OEM Ford CAD data, which is just going to ensure that the grill will fit perfectly without any goofy gaps or imperfections. Now I do also wanna point out that that bar going across the center portion of the grill itself that does incorporate your factory blue oval can be removed. In fact, there's some brackets here on the back of the grill that will basically allow you to remove this whole portion here. So just worth pointing out guys, if you did wanna change up the look of the grill at any point, you can totally do so. Last but not least, we did mention the LED running lights here, which have been incorporated, but the kit also includes all of the wiring needed to tap these guys into your factory headlights and therefore illuminate whenever your parking lights or headlights have been switched on. But now we wanna shed a little bit more light on the actual installation itself. So to do so, we're gonna give you a detailed walkthrough, give you an idea of what you're in for, along with giving you a quick tool breakdown. Check it out. Tools used for this installation include a 3 8 ratchet or gun, quarter inch ratchet, quarter inch extension, 10 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter swivel, T25 Torx tool, long flathead screwdriver, couple of panel removal tools, set of pliers or crimps, and then finally some wire connectors. Getting started, you need to pop the hood on your F-150 to access the six 10 millimeter bolts in order to remove your factory grill. With the two 10 millimeter bolts removed, now you can move on to the six 10 millimeter nuts. With all of your nuts and bolts removed, now carefully lower the hood and get ready to remove the factory grill. Now if you're doing this for the very first time, then chances are you will need a panel removal tool to get behind the factory grill and kind of pry it off as you go. Uh, since our grill has been off a bunch of times, it's going to be a lot easier to just yank off, but just be aware that you'll probably end up breaking a few of the plastic clips, not a big deal. They won't need to be reused for the new grill anyway. All right, with our factory grill removed, now we have it on the table because we need to swap over our factory blue oval emblem to the new Baja style grill. Not that difficult to do. What you wanna do, flip the grill over, lay it on something soft, of course, 
and you'll find two 10 millimeter nuts that you'll first need to remove and then also pry a little clip out of the way and at that point that emblem should pop right out. All right, with our two 10 millimeter nuts removed, now you have to take a flathead screwdriver or something similar and gently pry away at these two plastic areas to release the actual stud. At that point, the stud should pull out of the grill and you can remove your factory emblem. With our emblem in hand, now we're going to install it into our new Baja style grill. Basically the same way we took it out of the factory grill. We want to install these studs in their specific holes and then reinstall our two 10 millimeter nuts. Now this next part might be a little bit tricky due to the honeycomb design and layout. It's not a direct shot down with that stud and your 10 millimeter nut. Uh, if this proves to be a little too tricky for you, again, you can remove this entire bar by removing all of these Phillips head screws. It'd be a lot easier for you, but if you want to give it a shot, just go ahead and get it in place carefully. Because of the layout of this nut here, you might have to get creative with your setup. I'm just simply using a quarter inch ratchet with a swivel 10 mil along with a little tiny extension. Now I have our emblem transferred over as you guys can see, but before we move this over to the grill opening on our F-150, we're not quite done yet. We want to transfer over the lower portion of the grill skeleton here using the 5 to 6 T25 Torx screws, which we will remove right now. the screws removed, you can lift the skeleton out of place and set your factory grill aside for a later date. With the lower skeleton removed, now just simply reinstall it in your new Red Rock grill in reverse order using the T25 Torx screws you just removed. Now that we have both our emblem and our lower skeleton transferred over to the new Red Rock grill, now you simply just reinstall it into the grill opening. You have six studs up top that we have to line up in addition to the one, two, three, four, five different plastic clips. You wanna make sure you get those lined up. Might take a little finagling, but once you get everything in place, you can go ahead and lock those clips in. With our clips secured, now we got the hood open to reattach or reinstall some of our hardware. And we're gonna start with our two 10 millimeter bolts. I like to loosely start them first and then tighten them down after you got them both in place. With both 10 millimeter bolts installed, now you can go ahead and tighten them down.
Now the kit does include six brand new nuts to go on the studs that we've installed already for the top portion of the grill. So we're gonna go ahead and install those next. Same thing, just finger tight first and then go back and tighten them up with your 10 millimeter socket. With the grill physically installed, now comes the fun part, the wiring. Now luckily for us, these uh, three connections here are all plug and play, but once these are connected, then we're gonna run the other end of the harness down through the hood liner and into the engine bay where we'll pick up the connection at the headlight to tap into the parking light. So first things first, let's get these plugged in. All right, so now that we got our connections made up on the grill side, we're gonna start routing our wire down into the engine bay. Um, you can do this many different ways, of course, whatever way you prefer. Uh, I'm gonna go through the hood liner here by removing these two Christmas tree clips and then threading it down through the liner itself. Using my panel removal tool here to get in between the Christmas tree clip and the liner carefully pry out. All right, so with our clips removed, we have our pigtail here, power ground. We're simply just going to insert this into or behind the liner itself. And make sure you pull out all the slack you can because you're gonna need that in order to make the connection at the headlight. When you're happy with how you have your wire routed, go ahead and grab those Christmas tree clips you just removed, simply push them back into place. With our wire ran down through the engine bay, now we have to pop out our passenger side headlight in order to gain access to the parking light and headlight wiring so we can tap this into. Uh, very easy to remove the headlights on these trucks if you haven't done it before, simply three 10 millimeter bolts right here and the headlight should slide out. Now with our bolts removed, simply grab a hold of your headlight and pull towards the front. It should release the clip and allow you to slide the headlight out. Okay, with our headlight removed, now you can gain access to all of the necessary wiring, namely your parking lights, which is gonna be the harness over here. As you guys can see, we already have some vampire clips on these wires. We do a lot of work on these trucks here at the shop, hook up a lot of auxiliary lighting, so this is just kind of a quick solution for us. But just know if you're doing this on your truck at home, you will need to make a permanent connection to these two wires, black to black, and then your red is going to go to the yellow and green wire right here. You can solder them, you can use butt connectors, you can use whatever method you prefer, but just know these are the wires you will be making your connection to. So now that you know where they're going, we're gonna put some quick splice connectors on our harness and then make our connections. So now that we have our spade connectors crimped on, we're simply going to make our connections, again, black to black here. And then also the red wire is going to go to the yellow and green wire, which we have on our truck. 
With our connections made, always, always, always test your connections prior to reassembly. We just tested ours, everything fired right up, so that's good. Now we're going to reinstall the headlight and start buttoning everything back up. Reinstall your 10 millimeter bolts. Finger tight first. And then tighten down with your ratchet or cordless ratchet. Don't need a ton of force here. This is a plastic connection, so just get them snug. With your headlight tightened up, clean up any loose wiring and your installation is complete. That's gonna do it for this review and install of the Red Rock 4x4 Baja style grill for your 09 to 14 F-150. And hey, keep in mind, for more products and videos like this, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.